doing the best job getting those recorded. So in Ezekiel 3, 17 through 19, it says, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. Now, a lot of times when we hear the prophetic, it comes in the way of a warning. And that doesn't always seem like the most pleasant thing because warnings normally come when we're about to do something that's out of line. If my child was going to go put his hand on the stove, I would give him a warning. That's hot. If you do that, you're going to get burned. Now, they may respond, well, I want to. I don't understand. That doesn't make sense. Why can't you let me do that? You're robbing me of my joy. You're taking away. No, it's a warning because it will burn us. And oftentimes the warnings of God are not coming to quench what we desire to do. It's to warn us from things that we might think are going to benefit us. But in reality, they will not. So the office of the prophet is one that is going to warn from things that will be devastating. And he said, if I say to the wicked, you shall surely die and you will give him no warning nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. So those that operate in the prophetic, in the office of a prophet, God will require of them the blood of those if they remain silent and do not speak his word. So I believe that as we enter into 2024, we're going to see a revival, an absolute revival of spiritual gifts. And I believe that they are going to come in a way that is going to be supernatural, no denying what it is that God is doing in this moment. We're in a sped up pace. I keep kept hearing the Holy Spirit saying, things are moving faster. They're going to be moving faster. Uh, the things that have gotten you here in the past will not take you forward in the future. And too often I find that today we are relying on things of the past, our experiences, those things that have uh, been there to um, rely on, kind of fall back on. And it's as if the Holy Spirit is stripping everything away so our dependence is completely and wholly centered upon him. Now, he, go, he went on to say this, but if I warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. So it is a time for us not to be silent. It's a time for us not to turn a deaf ear. It's a time for us not to close our eyes and pretend we do not see. This is a day where we must honor the word of God. And when he speaks, we must be quick to respond. We must be quick to speak. Now, as we do so, that's the word of the Lord. It's not contrary to the word of God that says we must be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. When it comes to God, we must be quick to hear and quick to obey. So there is a time that we're in right now to be quick to hear and quick to obey. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7 says this, For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. There's nothing God's going to do on planet Earth unless he first reveals it to his prophets. It's his word. He will not go back on that premise or that, uh, that principle. Now, we understand that the fivefold ministry complement each other. And as we see, the prophet is like that trumpet blowing the warning aimed at changing behaviors. So imagine, uh, you know, as I mentioned, that hand, everything in the hand that works together to bring God's message. But in today, we're speaking specifically about the prophetic. So it may sound at times like it's not encouraging, but I want you to know the word of the Lord will always build. It will never return void, according to Isaiah 55. So as this word is going forth, I believe it will change us. Now, John 1.14 says this, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Why is that important? Because everything in the prophetic must have a foundation in the word of God. If you ever hear anything contrary to the word, it cannot come from the Lord. He will never contradict himself, and he will never say something that is in opposition to his own word. 
So we know that Jesus is the word. And when he was manifested, he was manifested. The latter part of that verse says, and we have seen his glory. Glory is only uh, as from the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. When the prophetic speaks, it speaks truth. But we understand that truth must be preceded by grace. It's what we call a binary truth. People will not receive truth until they understand grace. So when I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to men and women of God that understand the grace of God. You know his love directed towards you. You know his power directed towards you. You know the grace that's been displayed. So today is speaking specifically about that aspect of truth. But it is not, you cannot separate truth from grace. Now, with all of that being said, there are four levels to the prophetic that I believe we have to understand. Otherwise, we can get caught up into goofy doctrine. We can get caught up into things that are not taking us where the Lord wants us to go. What is that? Well, let's take a look at those one at a, uh, as, uh, at a time. If I were to give an illustration, I would say it like this. A German shepherd is a dog. But not all dogs are German shepherds. So you can have an overall category of prophecy, but not everybody who prophesies is a prophet. Does that make sense? A prophet is part of the fivefold ministry, but not everybody in the fivefold ministry is a prophet. Now, I believe they're all prophetic. And that's why I believe there is the a nature of the prophetic that needs to be defined and explained. Now, this is coming a little bit more from my teacher, if you will. But the first level that I want to talk about about the prophetic is what we call the spirit of prophecy. Turn with me to Revelation 19.10. Revelation 19.10 says, then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so now we see the Apostle John getting this revelation is referring this to everybody. He says the spirit, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit, the atmosphere, the attitude. Everything about prophecy is wrapped up and we can see it in Jesus. So here's an example. If I were to come to you, and say you're the head and not the tail. You're always above and never beneath. According to Deuteronomy 28. Guess what? I'm testifying to you about the word. That carries a prophetic anointing. Who, is, who does it apply to? Everybody. Because it is the spirit of prophecy. If I say that God wants you blessed going in and coming out. Everything that you set your hand to do. He wants to prosper. Is that prophetic? Absolutely, because it comes from the word of God. Therefore, there is that aspect of prophecy that everybody can flow in. You have the ability and the right to speak the word of God over other individuals and to speak the word of the Lord over them. That is the spirit of prophecy. Does that make sense? If you have any questions as we go along, please jot them down and we'll take some time at the end to answer any questions you may have. But right now, we've got that spirit of prophecy. Now, that is our testimony. Really, the spirit is that vital part. Spirit is the ruach. It means that everything that we're going to deal with prophetically comes from a root in Jesus. If there's not a root in the word, it cannot be accepted as infallible. It has to be from the word of God. Now, there will be people that will speak certain things because they believe this is what uh, God is impressing upon their heart and will deal with the manifestation of prophecy and the gift of prophecy in a moment. But right now, speaking the word, the written word that God has given to us is that testimony of Jesus and it is the spirit of prophecy. Now, we can operate in this level of the prophetic at any time. There's no requirements. You want to speak the word of God over somebody, you can do it anytime you want. 
any place you want. You know the word, you speak the word, and it's relevant to that person. Remember, as I've defined the prophetic, it's the ability to reveal the heart, mind, and will of God for any specific place, purpose, or time. Now, I'll give that to you again. That came out of 1 Corinthians 13 extrapolated. It says the, the prophetic really is the ability to reveal the heart, mind, and will of God for any specific place, purpose, or time. Now, if anybody would like my notes after this is over, you can drop your email in. I'll make sure that you get notes if you're here in attendance. Uh, now, with that, um, the next level that we're going to see of the prophetic is what we call the manifestation of prophecy. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7, it says, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So these are manifestational gifts, and they are given to benefit everybody. One of those is prophecy. And the manifestation of prophecy is to build and to edify. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 through 3 says, For one who speaks in, in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands him. But he, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. So now here, what the prophetic does, it's to build us up. Number one, the prophetic will build you up. And the manifestation of prophecy should be for the building up of people. The second thing that it does is encourage. Now. I need to stop here. There are certain things that may not seem pleasant, but they are encouraging. We may be going through tough times, and we may not want to hear what the Lord has to say, but they will encourage you because you know that following him will strengthen you and get you to where you need to go. So it's a perspective thing. You've all heard of the pessimist. And the optimist, they look at a glass half filled with water. The pessimist says it's half empty. The, pe uh, the optimist says it's half full. For somebody who's thirsty, they go free water. So it really doesn't matter what you need, whether it's half empty, half full. It's your perspective. If you're going through a tough time, receive the word of the Lord as encouragement not as a rebuke or a challenge. Now, it may be challenging us to change behavior, and, and it might even be a rebuke, but that can be encouraging too. It's a matter of how we receive it. It's a matter of the soil of our heart. Remember, when the word is sown, according to the parable of the sower, if we look at Mark 4 and, and Luke 8 and Matthew 13, that the type of soil that the seed goes into is determined by the individual. We till our hearts. We make it receptive to the word of God. And if we'll make that word receptive, then the prophetic can be very encouraging. Now, let's take a look at this a little bit further. Uh, he speaks of building encouragement and consolation. How many of you know that there are times when you're going through a tough time and you just need the word of, the God, uh, word of God to console you at that moment? You know, there might be things that are not proper in my life, but God, I need I need you right now more than I've ever needed you. And we get before the throne. We just need his consolation in our life. So those are things that we thank God for and say, we thank you that in this moment, you cared enough about me. You singled me out to come and speak to me. Thank you for caring enough about me to bring that peace and that comfort that I need in my life. Now, this gift is manifested as the spirit wills, where the first level of the prophetic you can operate in any time as you want. This level is as the spirit moves upon us. It is his direction, his leading. And here's what we understand. 1 Corinthians 12, 11 says all these gifts that he just talked about, all these gifts are empowered by one and the self same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he will. So now we see the first two levels of the prophetic. And if we don't understand these levels, 
what happens is we'll mistake. If somebody quotes the word of God over somebody operating in that uh, spirit of, uh, of prophecy, but they don't understand the word real well, how accurate will that prophetic word be? There will be probably some error in it. That's why every prophetic word needs to be based and gauged against the word of God. It's very important to do that. Now, the third level is what we call the gift of prophecy. And that is one that is given to an individual, according to Romans 12, 4 through 6. It says, for as in one body, we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So now we're talking about a prophetic function that somebody has. It is a gift, the charis. It is something that is given specifically to someone in the body of Christ for the same purpose, to edify, to build, to comfort, to point out, to correct. All of those things are given. But let's read on a little bit further. That function is given so we, though many, are one body in Christ. The overall emphasis of the prophetic is still to unite the body of Christ, to bring together till we all come in the unity of faith, according to Ephesians 4. The fivefold ministry is constantly equipping till we come into that unity of faith. Now, goes on saying this. Um, Though we are one body in Christ and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith. Now, this again is a gift that can be operated in any time, but it will only be as accurate as the level of the word that is in somebody. Again, why? Let us prophesy according to our proportion of faith. We know faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is not just a strong belief. The world has a belief system. Seeing is believing. God deals with the unseen. Faith is receiving what is not yet revealed to the natural senses as though it's already done. So faith, that kind of faith, comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. So this gift of prophecy that we see in Romans 12, 6 is one that is based in the word of God and the accuracy of a prophetic word that is given will be based on the degree of the word that is on the individual. Again, comparing everything back to the word of God. Now then, let's take a look at the fourth and the last level of the prophetic. That is the office of the prophet. The office of the prophet is part of the fivefold ministry, Ephesians 4, 11 through 14. And he, referring to Jesus, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and in deceitful schemes. Listen, there is an enemy of our soul, and things have not changed through the millennia. His goal is always to blind the minds of those that don't believe, not just those who aren't believing for salvation, but anybody that is not believing for the word of God, anybody that's not standing on the word of God, he will try to blind their minds. And the reason that he does that is so that he can come in and get his deceitful schemes operating. Now, we don't want that in our lives. We don't want deceitful schemes, human cunning. And listen, we have never been faced with so much human cunning as we're seeing today. And let me put it to you like this. The enemy always comes with the same promise that he's come from from the beginning of time. And that is enlightenment. In the beginning, in the garden, he came to Eve and said, as soon as you do what God told you not to do, you'll be enlightened. You'll have a new knowledge. And what happens today? The same exact thing. 
if you stand for biblical principles or what is right according to the word of God, many will say, you're just not enlightened. You don't understand. And because of that, they discount what you say. Do not fall into the trap of enlightenment by chasing after worldly wisdom. It is a foolish task that will draw you away from the word of God. The world's wisdom will tell you in our society today that God is an antiquated thought. Religion is outdated. Science is now the new God. We've exchanged our priestly robes, as it were, for lab coats. We're now into an area of AI, artificial intelligence. And mark my words, within 2024, you will see an AI Bible come to light. They will completely rewrite the word of God with AI and try to pawn it off as the word of God. It is nothing but a bad counterfeit. There are translations today or so-called translations today of the Bible that have so changed the meaning of the word of God, I will not even use them or allow them to be used in our ministry team. The reason for that is they are just so inaccurate. Now, there's a lot of great translations. I'm not one of these guys that says, you know, if you're not King James, you're, you're missing it because I don't believe that. I, in fact, I believe that there's probably many things that are much more accurate in our day as far as carrying the thought concepts of what was trying to be put across to us. But that's for another day. When it comes to the prophetic, it must always go back to the word. The philosophies today to where you can choose your gender. Give me a break. God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God knows whether you're a boy or whether you are a girl. God did not create. You know, I, I'm writing a book right now called The Unholy Trinity, and I want you to know that one of the premises in that book is this. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthian church and he says, I fear lest by any means you've been deceived from the simplicity that's found in Christ, as was Eve. Sometimes we overcomplicate things. When we look at how we were created, God created us with dominion, with authority, and to replicate. He said, you need to go out and prosper. This is what you need to do. You need to be out there. You need to go and replenish the earth. Now, anything that would take your dominion and God away can't be right. That's simple. It's not always easy, but it's simple. Anything that would go contrary to replenishing the earth is wrong. Now, in the beginning, you will see this, that God created Eve as a helpmate for Adam. Why is that? Because there had been a heavenly rebellion already. And in that heavenly rebellion, even those that were part of God's divine counsel rebelled. When God created Adam, he looks at Adam knowing that if even these divine beings, the sons of God recorded in Job 38 verse 7, even if some of them could rebel and fall away, what would keep his new creation man? So he created a helper. And when you look at the root word used for Eve here and carry it through, you'll find that she was a warring entity called alongside to war with Adam. Together they would stand. And if they stood together, the enemy would have a formidable foe that they would stand united. And that's why it's so important. That's why a man and a man together, number one, cannot replenish and is no threat to the kingdom of darkness. Homosexuality cannot fulfill what it is that God has in our day and our age, ever. That's why he's not afraid of a woman and a woman together. But a man and a woman together can fulfill the plan of God in replenishing the earth and standing against the wiles of the enemy. Now, I know that's not popular anymore. And I know that that's a good reason for social media to cancel us and to pull our videos down. But you know what? I do not bow to the altar of social media. I am not going to compromise the word of God because somebody may or may not like it or they may be offended. 
Remember, the prophetic comes, and as the prophetic comes, especially out of the mouth of a prophet, it will be geared towards changing behavior. And those that receive it as a threat do not have the soil to change. It doesn't change the word, and they may be offended by it. But a person that's trapped in a lifestyle they want to get out of, this gives them the understanding where they can now get out of a trapped lifestyle that they are not happy with. That's what I want to see. I was talking to an individual just a couple weeks ago, caught up in a homosexual lifestyle. And I talked to them very pointedly. And I said, what are you doing? And they said, I just feel trapped. And I go, I know, but you know, this is not where God has you. I know. Thank you for calling me. Thank you for reminding me. I needed this so I can get free. They had a heart to change out of that lifestyle. And I thank God for that. But that's what the prophetic does. Does that make sense? I want to clarify that. You may hear somebody speak the word of God, and if they misquote it, don't take it to heart and don't get upset. I, I pray that we all would desire spiritual gifts. I pray that we all would go after uh, speaking the word of God over somebody. But you know what? We're going to make mistakes sometimes. That's okay. When it comes to the manifestation, people will speak as the spirit moves. You know what? They might miss it sometimes. That's okay. They're operating in that. Those that have the gift of prophecy, dependent on the word that's in them, they may miss it at times. But when it comes to the office of the prophet, speaking as a prophet, the word gave very explicit guidelines. That is, that they were 100% accurate or a false prophet. I would never want to be known as a false prophet. So when I speak in the name of the Lord, I speak with the authority of heaven standing in an office that I believe will bring to pass the word of the Lord. Now that is just to give understanding because too often everybody's a prophet, everybody's prophesying. And yes, we can all prophesy, but that does not make everybody a prophet any more than all dogs are German shepherds. Okay, so don't get confused by quote-unquote prophetic words that may come, and yet you may find we're errant. Because I've been in ministry now 42 years full-time. Well, actually, I'm in my 43rd year. And understanding that many times mistakes are made, but they're not flowing in the office of the prophet in that moment. Now, I could sum it up like this. The prophetic has different levels in the body of Christ. And grasping those differences will make the difference in our understanding. So when a prophet speaks as a prophet in the name of the Lord, his accuracy must be complete. Does that make sense? Now, let me get into the word of the Lord for 2024. I believe this will encourage you. I believe this will build you. But I wanted to set the foundation. These things must come and line up to the word of God. Let me give you a premise for the word today. Jeremiah 31, 28. And it shall come to pass that as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring harm, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. Now, in this next year, I kept hearing a tearing up, an uprooting, and a planting that things of the past that have taken us to where we are will not take us to where we're going. There will be a tearing up. It doesn't mean it was bad in that day, but it, it will no longer carry us to where we need to go. There were things where we became dependent in the arm of the Lord, and that must be eliminated. If we will not eliminate it ourselves, God will remove it from our lives. Listen, we can either pluck it up or there's going to be a tearing. When there's tearing, there's bloodshed. I mean, just if you tear a muscle, you tear something, it's not pleasant. If I go pluck it up, I have control over that. The word of the Lord to us is pluck it up before it has to be torn out. Because if it comes to the point of having to be torn out, it's not going to be pleasant in the moment. So 2024 is a time. Examine yourself. Examine your life. Examine your ministry. If something is present 
that is not of God, and you know whether something in your life is present, and hear me, I'm going to be very blunt. Dealing with pastors globally, the number one thing that I'm dealing with today with ministers of the gospel is pornography. Now hear me very carefully. Uproot it now or it will be torn from you. And the tearing is not a good process. It's good in the end, but it won't feel good in the moment. So there are things, the goddess Asherah, and by the way, she's still operating today. She was responsible for media. She was responsible for um, uh, so many different things that we see. She was responsible in, in the ancient Mesopotamian text. She declared, I am neither male nor female. I can be either one. We see her manifesting today over and over and over again. And don't fool yourselves, these eternal or immortal beings are still immortal. They're not eternal because they're not from time, um, from beginning. They were created beings, but they are immortal beings. And they are still in operation today. The very first commandment that God gave us is, you shall have no other gods before me. He would not make that statement if there weren't other gods. Now, I know that terminology throws a lot of people off, and I don't have time to go into the teaching today, but I'm telling you, the second commandment was don't make any graven image or idol. If you want more reference, look at Psalm 82. You can go to Psalm 82 and even get more reference on the divine counsel of God. Now, for now, God wants these things to be uprooted. Because if they're torn, there will be pain. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 1 through 12 for I do not want you to be unaware. The prophetic brings awareness to our eyes. The apostle Paul says, brothers, that our fathers were all under a cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual, catch this, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. And the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased. They all had the opportunity to drink from the rock, from the word of God. They had the ability to drink there. In one case, natural, but it has spiritual ramifications. How do we know that? Because he says that right, uh, right here. He says, now these things took place as examples. That word example is a powerful word. It's the word tupos in Greek, and it means it is the pattern, it's the die, it's the blueprint. In other words, he's saying all of these things took place as a blueprint for you. This was to give you warning. This was to show you, you can drink from the rock and still not be in God's best graces. He was displeased with them because they were not obedient to him. So what did he say? These took place as examples for us that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people, um, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. So we must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We, not, we must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now, these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. Again, God is saying, this is the blueprint. See the blueprint. And what he spoke for 2024 is an absolute call to righteousness and holiness. There will be no substitute for the leaders of God in this year. No substitute. So there will be a tearing, but there will also be a building. God will give you ideas in this coming year that will come to you in a moment. What used to take years will now take a year. What used to take a year will take a month. What used to take a month will take a week. What used to take a week will be done in an hour. And ideas will come so fast that I encourage you to get a, a, a pen, paper, journal, and immediately jot them down so they're not lost. 
to the busyness of your day. When you hear the word of the Lord come to you, stop and take time to write it down because they will be coming just that fast. Everything that is contrary to the will of God must be abhorred. And I know in the last three years, God has been working things in my life, revealing things, challenging me, things that needed to be stripped away, things that I had put my confidence in that I could no longer put my confidence in. And for so many, their confidence was in somebody else, somebody else's provision, somebody else's ability to sustain, or even in their own hands to sustain themselves. And we became God in our own eyes. God is Jehovah Jireh. God is our provider. God is the one who will make a way. And until we get our eyes off of ourselves and off to and off of other ways of provision, we will struggle in 2024 because we've become God and we've allowed that idol of other things to come in and not allow God to be Jehovah Jireh. So we must eliminate those things completely, whatever it takes. And by the way, don't worry about your reputation. Don't worry about anything along those lines, because what's more important is a good name is to be chosen rather than silver or gold. And I would rather have everything stripped from my life that I could be completely dependent on him than to have everything and miss him. David put it so well, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the gates or with the courts of the wicked. I would rather just be present with him. And how important it is for us in this day just to be pres present. Ecclesiastes 11.4 says this, He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. If you look to the situations and circumstances around you, you will not do what you need to do in 2024. Get your eyes off of what you see and hear with the ears of the Spirit, see with the eyes of the Spirit, because that is what will carry you through to successful ministry in 2024. There is not only the uprooting and tearing, but there is the expansion and building. And I know of a certainty that this is taking place. It is happening right now. I've been talking with pastor friends around the world and, and I called many of them just in the last day, said, tell me again, what is God saying to you for 2024? This is going to be one of our greatest years for evangelism. But don't think for a moment that we're going to be speaking the word of the Lord without opposition. But opposition cannot overcome you. Opposition will not destroy you. Opposition will only cause you to question if there are things in your life that are contrary to God. So when we look at these things, one of the last things that the Holy Spirit spoke to me is in 2024, you will see national leaders instantly removed. There will be those that are in powers and positions of authority that will no longer be there. They may start the year in that position, but they will be gone within the year. God will establish his authority. God will establish and put into positions of authority those that he wants to perform his purpose. Now hear me very carefully. God's purpose may not always line up to what we think his purpose should be. We are not creating God in our image. There will even be leaders that will be put into positions that you will shake your head at and go, I don't know how that person is there. I don't see anything godly in them. But remember, Romans 13, 1 says that God establishes every authority and it's established for our good, for his word to be performed. So I'm believing that with every one of these transitions that will take place in 2024, and we're talking suddenly. When these happen, there will be certain things that will change. One of the nations that I see suddenly changing is the nation of India. India will have a suddenly. And it's just, now there will be numerous, but in India, specifically, as I prayed, I saw it over and over and over again, a suddenly in the change of leadership. 
I see it in other nations. I saw it in the nation of Kenya and instantly. I saw it in the United Kingdom and instantly. I saw it in the United States and instantly. And hear me, God will begin judging nations. As you know, our our ministry headquarters for Africa is in South Africa. We've got a brother from South Africa. But I also know that in South Africa, we have a tendency to want to copy and emulate what the United States does. And it has taken the nation into a bad scenario. I The last time I was there, I could not go but just a few blocks through Johannesburg without seeing some type of sign for abortion. And it broke my heart. I mean, how is it that we have gotten to the point to where the god Molech that would sacrifice children is now operating again and killing our children? And we're willingly abdicating our positions of authority as parents and allowing him to do it. And it broke my heart. The very cries of their blood are still crying out to heaven. And I want you to know, we are the ones responsible for sounding the alarm. Now, couple it with grace. When you speak with people, couple it with grace. God's not mad at people. He loves people. He may hate the action. He detests those things that are abominations in his eyes, but he loves the person. And if you get caught up in the detestable abomination, you will no longer see the person and love them. That will render you ineffective to sharing the gospel with them. So as we sound the alarm in 2024, do not worry, do not fret. God will go before you. God is big enough to sustain you. God is big enough to protect you. God is big enough to provide for you. God is big enough to do all of these things that we're talking about. But don't think it's strange when we see these things happening. So let me wrap this time up. In 2024, there will be a tearing, an uprooting, and a rebuilding. Things that have gotten us to this point will no longer carry us into the future. Anything that is contrary to the life and nature of God must be removed from our lives if we're going to speak with the authority of the Word of God. We have to understand that in this building process, those things that carry us here will not carry us any further. Be quick to respond to the ideas and the freshness of the Holy Spirit in your life. Spiritual gifts will arise once again in a wave to where they will hit not only those that are quote unquote Pentecostal, but it will sweep through non-denominational, denominational, mainline, anything you want to name, the Spirit of God is going to move as in early days. And those that have a heart to receive will receive. In this day, Father, I pray that your word would go forth with boldness and accuracy. Father, I thank you that you are preparing the hearts of these that are here today, that you've had those here today that needed to be here for this moment. Father, as we enter into 2024, a great year for evangelism, may we implement your plan for success. We love you, and we thank you for this time together. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen.